I'm Cody with Go Engineer. We all know how great the Solid Toolbox is. We also know how great PDM is. I want to talk to you today about setting those up to work together and how that can really benefit your company. The SOLIDWORKS toolbox is incredibly scalable, meaning you can track as many or as few things as you need. You can have it as simple as just a drag and drop library of hardware components for your assemblies, but you can make those hardware components intelligent. You can track part numbers and manufacturers, supplier, maybe even technical details, anything you need that you don't want to enter by hand about your hardware, you can use the toolbox to track that automatically. An example I have from my experience is I worked at a company as a designer. I would pass hardware components and assemblies onto purchasing. They would pick up hardware components and then send that information to manufacturing who would build our prototypes. This was great in theory, but it led to one problem. Say purchasing looked up the wrong hardware number. They would pass on the wrong hardware number and the wrong components that they purchased onto manufacturing. They would then be unable to make my prototype and thus add delays and costs to our product cycle. But what was the problem here? Why was this such a big deal? Someone had to manually look up part numbers for hardware and assemblies. This lookup, this process of looking this up is what caused errors. We're looking to remove that from the cycle by having all of those part numbers automatically populate in all of your bills and materials. No one should ever have to look up a part number ever again. So I wanna show you what this looks like inside SOLIDWORKS now. So if we cut over to SOLIDWORKS, here we can see on the right hand side is your design library. This is where Toolbox exists. You can drag and drop components out of this by just navigating to the component you want and dropping it into your assembly. It'll snap and auto size to the whole wizard hole that you've put in your component and you can easily drag to change lengths. You can add this to as many or as few holes as you want, and you can use this as a very simple way to add a couple pieces of hardware to an assembly. But when you wanna add lots of hardware to an assembly, I'd recommend using some of the advanced features. So like Smart Fasteners is a great tool to add a lot of hardware. You can click on a component, add, and it will go and find all of the hole wizard holes in that assembly. Smart Fasteners will also auto update lengths and allow you to add stacks, meaning you could put nuts, washers, all in your assembly in one step, specify what those are, specify your length, and hit OK. Then you've inserted all these components into your assembly really quickly and you have one place to edit them. We've done something actually really powerful here. Instead of just adding physical geometry to this assembly, on the back end, I've actually added part numbers and ordering information. So now when we take this part to a drawing or pass this on and create bills of materials, those bills of materials will have all the ordering information already up, like preloaded. So let's take a look at that. Let's drop in a bill of materials and see what we see. We can see here that all of these components have part numbers. We have my part numbers, the PRTs. This is the stuff my company creates. But then we have all these other part numbers as well. These are our ordering part numbers. These are what I would pass on to purchasing to pick up these components from various vendors for our assembly. But what happens when I wanna change my part numbers or change the hardware in my assembly? That's also great because as I change the hardware using any of the toolbox features, those part numbers are gonna dynamically update, meaning I will never have a bill of materials out of sync with my assembly. It will always have all of the right information in my drawings, and it'll make it very easy for purchasing or manufacturing to build or order the components required for my product. Now let's take a look at what this will do with our PDM system. So conventional drawings to manufacturing is great, but what if they have the wrong drawings? What if they don't have up-to-date information? With PDM, we remove that as an obstacle. So let's take a look at SOLIDWORKS and see what this interface is gonna look like when you're using PDM and the toolbox. So let's take that assembly that we just added hardware to, and we're gonna check that into the vault. And once we've checked it in, we're gonna jump over to the vault view and see what this looks like in our environment. This is gonna be how others are gonna view our part. 
Here's a preview of our assembly with our new hardware. Perfect, it looks great. And now we're gonna cut over to the more important thing, the bill of materials. You'll see in the bill of materials, I also have all of that toolbox information readily populated, meaning purchasing is never gonna have out of date information. It updates as soon as I save it. Now, also a thing we can do here is look at previous versions. So if I have released a product and moved on with development and someone contacts me about a previous revision, I can also look up not only what state those parts were in at that time, but I can also see the hardware, where I ordered it from and the part numbers involved. But the next question is how do you set this up so that your system mimics my system? I wanna take some time, show you some tips and tricks and show you from start to finish how to set this up so it works as good on your end as it works on mine. Now let's go through the steps in setting this up both in PDM and in toolbox. We're gonna to start on the PDM side by saving a toolbox data folder or SOLIDWORKS data folder as its default named into your vault. That is your SOLIDWORKS toolbox. Once you've saved that into the vault and checked it in, we'll need to open up your admin tool to make some changes. So open up your administration tool, open up your vaults, and then we're gonna go down to the SOLIDWORKS settings. In SOLIDWORKS settings is the toolbox configuration. From here, we're gonna notify PDM that this is a SOLIDWORKS toolbox and it needs to manage it. It has some default permissions. In this video, mine is set to use system administrator. Toolbox has its own permission scheme and I'm gonna let that handle permissions. So I'm gonna let the default be the system administrator. From there, it should auto-populate the folder of your toolbox data folder. If it doesn't, feel free to update that to the location of your toolbox. Once we've done that, We've technically set it all up, but I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks in this video, and here's that first tip. We should also set up some auto caching for any users that regularly use Toolbox. This is just gonna keep everyone in sync and cut down on any kind of update problems. So if we navigate to the group and go down to auto caching, we'll be able to set the folder that your database exists in as an auto cache folder. Now, anytime anyone logs in, they will automatically have the up-to-date folder for their toolbox. Click that. As you can see on mine, I've already toggled this as a setting and we're just gonna hit okay. From there, we've set up the majority of the PDM settings for toolbox. Now we're gonna step over to the other side and set up the SOLIDWORKS toolbox. To do that, you're going to launch what's called toolbox settings. This is either a standalone application in Windows, or it can be launched from within SOLIDWORKS by clicking the Configure Toolbox button. It will prompt you to check it out now that it's in PDM, and you'll accept that. Here is the Toolbox UI. This is the window where we can define user settings, set permissions, or configure our fasteners. We're gonna start with our permissions. You can see here that all of my options are grayed out. This is because like I mentioned earlier, Toolbox has its own permission scheme. Here I've logged in and now I can change settings. The upper settings are toolbox wide, meaning this is what I'm limiting from all my users. And below I have user settings and smart fasteners. I can set these to be user specific or they can be toolbox specific, meaning set for all users inside my toolbox. So here, is the toolbox settings. And here comes in that second tip and trick I mentioned earlier. We're going to create parts in our file settings. Now, let me explain how this works. Whenever you use a new size of a toolbox fastener, it has to save that data somewhere. It can either A, create a configuration on a toolbox part and save all the data there, or B, it can create its own individual part file for that size. The first option will lead to a few number of very large files. As you can imagine, you may end up with thousands of configurations, or you may end up with a very large number, possibly thousands of very small files. Think about this in the context of an assembly now. What will run better? If I put in 100 pieces of hardware and their file sizes are very large, 
or a hundred pieces of hardware and the file size is very small. You can kind of see the difference. The next thing, once we specify create parts, we're going to have to specify a location. because Toolbox needs to know where do you want to keep these. Obviously we're going to keep these in the vault and you're going to click on this box here to specify that location. Traditionally, Toolbox has a location inside its folder called copy parts that you can put these files. The next thing, we're just going to leave the writing read only documents flag set to always change. And last are the display options. These are the component name, part number and description, and how these are portrayed to the user. Where do you want to see or what data do you want to see portrayed to the user here? As you can see in mine, the description is what I see in the feature manager inside SolidWorks. Obviously my part number is my part number in my bill of materials. If I had a custom part number field, say like manufacturer part number or separate field, I could set this here so that's what shows up in my bills of materials. And then description. I just have a basic description, so I just set that as my description in Toolbox. Now that we've finished setting up these settings and the permissions, we can have one last stop over at Smart Fasteners to set that up since we used that at the beginning of this video. The Smart Fastener setup is super easy. It's a very simple window. The first is washer sizes. What washers do you want? And are, do you want to impose any restrictions? The second section is the automatic feature change or fastener change, I should say. Meaning when we make changes to our assemblies, what hardware should Toolbox go and populate those new sizes with? So if I make my part thicker, I'll obviously need a longer bolt. This is looking for the settings to, for Toolbox so it can decide which bolt I'm going to need. And then lastly, what is like my default piece of hardware? If I just selected a hole and said, I want to put a fastener there, what fastener should I use? If you don't specify one, it'll go grab this default as you specified it for the toolbox. Now we can step over and customize our hardware. So this is the customized hardware window. This is where you're going to turn on or off standards that your users can see. I would recommend turning off standards that your engineer should have no business using. So for example, a British standard, um, a Chinese standard, a German standard. As you can see, I've turned all of those off. So there's no reason I should take up their time having to sort through these for the components they want. So this ability to turn on or off components doesn't only exist at the standards level. It's going to exist at every level all the way down to the users. So if I navigate into my ANSI inch folder, I can also turn off different components like structural members. If they're not going to use toolbox structural members, I shouldn't have that as a line item. I should just revoke that because again, I shouldn't waste their time having to navigate through options that aren't relevant to them. So let's go to a component that I've set up here. This is the socket head cap screw. Once you click in this by default, it'll have roughly 52,000 options. That's kind of unrealistic to put in part numbers for. We're also likely not going to use all 52,000 different socket head cap screw configurations that exist in ANSI inch. So we're going to go through and remove a lot of those options. So we can remove sizes since my manufacturer or my supplier doesn't use all of the sizes that are options. I've gone through here and turned off the majority of them only leaving on the sizes that I actually can order. I've done the same with length. Again, the majority of these were turned off and I only turned on the ones that were relevant. You can go back and also do that through drive type and thread length. After this, you'll have a much more reasonable number of components to enter information for. As you can see here, there's only 152. Now you can enter information manually into the columns below, but that sounds like a very tedious process and one that I did not personally want to partake in. And here's that third tip and trick. I would use Excel or any application that uses Excel file types. You can choose export and it's going to create an Excel file with all of the information in this lower window. You can go in and enter part numbers, descriptions, comments, or if you have any kind of custom properties, those will also be columns that can be populated. So for this video, 
I had description and comment as things that existed as different line items, and I just concatenated them into their own columns. So that's where I got the length and the name for those columns. Once that's done, simply re-import that Excel data, and the table will be automatically filled. It is recommended that you hang on to these Excel files as they kind of serve as a pseudo backup for the data you've entered into your toolbox. You would just need to set this up for all of the fasteners that you want this information for. But once it's set up, it's done. Now, anytime a user uses any hardware in the toolbox, it will automatically have part numbers. You can edit these, change them, and update them as you need. We've now shown you how to leverage not only your SOLIDWORKS toolbox, but PDM as well to cut down on errors and speed up productivity. If you have any questions about the content of this video or how to set it up, please contact us at GoEngineer. We'd be happy to help you out. Again, this has been Cody with GoEngineer. Thank you.